Welcome to this episode of Whitetail Tips and Tactics brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. Well, it's October and the weather's changing, the whitetail bucks have lost their velvet, and their food sources are changing. You've got acorns falling, you've got farmers out harvesting crops, whether it be beans, corn, milo, depending on where you're at. Uh, they've, there's pretty much food everywhere and the amount of daylight uh, is shrinking as far as hours per day. So therefore, you're more optimal to have bucks turn nocturnal, uh, which moving at night, or at least your trail cameras are showing you that you're getting a lot of nighttime movement. Uh, that's normal this time of year. So what you gotta do to key in on is what I like to do is I'll key in on those food sources, bur oaks, all of those, all of those nut-based trees, and the deer seem to gravitate to those this time of year and they'll really be feeding heavy on those. Um, if you do not have that, what I would recommend the green clovers, if you do have food plots, or if you have a clover field, alfalfa field nearby, uh, even if it's not on your property, you'd want to get in an area that's gonna intercept deer going to those areas to go feed, because most likely they're gonna be feeding them uh, in those fields at night. Uh, but they will be browsing on the nuts throughout the day. <clears throat> October lull is true. Usually it's about the second week of October for about that week and a half uh, where it's really a lot of slow movement. I've got my own theory to that. There's, uh, You'll still catch a few bucks up on their feet. You'll see some scrapes starting to pop up uh, where bucks have, are, are being active uh, after dark. Um, so one thing that you can do is put yourself in position to be successful. If that's what the sign is telling you, that you've got a logging road or you've got a trail or a field edge where there has been some buck activity, even though it's at night, uh, whether you're seeing scrapes pop up on the ground, uh, some rubs or whatever, that's usually deer want to establish their area, their core area. So what you can do is you can go in and move closer to those areas because those deer will come back and check those. Uh, the month of October is a great time to do that for sure as we get inch a little bit closer to the rut which will be coming in upcoming episodes uh, we'll be talking about that but I do believe this if you set back on what you were doing early season and expect results it can happen anything's possible but you've got to be versatile you've got to move uh, to where the deer want to be and if the acorns are falling in the timber, you've got to be able to adapt and move to where the deer want to be. Make sure the wind's right. Get in there where the deer want to be. Be, be conscious of your entry and exit. It's very, very vital uh, through every hunt, making sure that you can get in and get out undetected if possible. As you start to see scrapes and rubs start to pop up, you'll want to identify the travel corridors on your property. Uh, so what that means, look for those pinch points, those highly traveled areas that's going to get a deer from point A to point B. Because you're going to see bucks frequent those paths uh, quite often, checking for those first does to come in estrus. Uh, October can be a very, very challenging month. Uh, and you just got to stick after it and stay with it because the deer are constantly changing. As we get closer to the rut, uh, that's when the action is, you know, that's when you usually start to see a lot of chasing and uh, have some fun, action-packed morning and evening sets. Uh, tree stand set up, ground blind set up, or what have you. The, this time of year, sometimes you have to adapt. Uh, like I said, the food sources are, have changed. Uh, they're on the acorns, they're on the clover, uh, persimmons, whatever it may be. So you gotta move towards them. First, let's start with acorn flats. Uh, do you want to sit up right in the, the highest bearing uh, acorn tree there is? The biggest white oak, the one that's got the most nuts? The answer is no, you don't. Uh, you don't want to be right on top of the deer. You want to, where you're seeing all that sign, you want to sit 20 to 25 yards off to the side of there. That, that'll allow you the best optimal shot of a, of a deer being broadside or slightly quartered away. Um, the other thing, hunt a field edge. A lot of people think, hey, I want to sit up right on the edge of the field. Well, if you're in a tree stand, my suggestion would be to move about five yards in. And the reason for that is it allows you more shade and canopy. This will help keep you concealed to where you can still have high visibility out into the field and along the edge, but also allow the shade and the cover to keep you hidden. 
So just remember, green fields, acorns, food sources, and uh, watch the weather. Watch the weather. If you can get out there when a front's coming in uh, through this time, these next couple weeks are usually uh, pretty vital. They call it the October lull. Uh, deer are, there's a lot fewer hours of daylight uh, during the day. So you're gonna get a lot more nocturnal pictures. And uh, as it progresses, uh, the season's gonna change because the rut's getting closer. The bucks are gonna start to be on their feet a little bit more, checking those scrapes, freshening up those scrapes, making rubs. You're gonna see more buck sign and that's a sure tell sign that you're gonna to need to be in the woods a little bit more. Hopefully what we went over will help you be more successful in the whitetail woods. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to shoot them over. We'd love to answer your questions and also learn from you. Uh, so thank you for watching Whitetail Tips and Tactics brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse.